Fans will see you get in the ring, and immediately people are like, TJ could come back. I know they say never say never, but I've said never for the last eight years. The work you're doing behind the scenes, it's just incredible. It's always a challenge, and the challenge is always to top whatever we did last time. I don't know if Natty's told you this. Obviously, she's going to go in the Hall of Fame one day, right? Yeah. She'll help you to induct her one day. I'm very proud of Natty's career. Having the most matches of any woman in WWE history, and she just keeps adding on to that. You can't manufacture that. Your hair is incredible. <laughs> <laughs> what would you call that haircut? A lot of people would call it the Charlie Brown. Good to see you again. Chris, always good to see you. I think it's been five years since we sat down in person. Well, I guess we were standing, actually. Yeah, we, we stood. We, we in stood. a very cold room. It was well, freezing. That, that's, that's Florida for you, right? <laughs> yep. Hot, really hot outside, really cold inside. Far too cold yep. inside. <laughs> yeah. And then we did one over Zoom, but yeah, nothing yeah. beats doing this in person. No, hell no. This is awesome. Yeah, it's just so good. Thank you for inviting me into your home. Oh, it's my pleasure. Your cats have welcomed us I, in here. Yeah, that's right. Do I we look, have one? I glanced over. Yeah, with this guy. This oh, guy, who's this? Big Louie's got to come see me always. Come here, Louie. Big Louie? Louie. <laughs> nah, well, now he's, he'll play the yeah. singing frog, but he <laughs> listens fairly well. Come on. <laughs> I want to grab him. No, okay. <laughs> he'll, he'll make his way over at some yeah. point. A lot of cats in here. Yeah, there's, there's quite a few. The hearts love their cats. Like, yeah, there's, I don't, it's so Eddie funny. talks about cats I, all the I, time. I happen, to, I happen to love cats even before I got engulfed by the Hart family. So it was a double whammy. <laughs> Look at this. This is good. Yeah, they, they, they run the house. We just happen to live here. Natty's stealing the cats away here. Yep, one at a time. <laughs> I've seen so many videos that you guys have been posting inside your dungeon. Yes, sir. And I, I feel like, you know, fans will see you get in the rim, ring, you know, doing some hands on stuff, and immediately people are like, ah, yeah. TJ could come yeah, back. Yeah. Where are you on that? Uh, I mean, uh, I know they say never say never, but uh, I'm, I've said never for the last eight years. <laughs> um, no, the truth is I can do like, uh, I can do probably in, in some things I can do like 99% of the move. I just can't do the, the actual bump Yeah. or, you know, and, and I'm sure maybe I could take a couple, but, but at what cost or I don't know, like I, I haven't, I haven't taken one. So there's no, what's the point? There's no point right. to me. What's the point in trying one that could it really hurts you. Now, if I, I am very fortunate, uh, you know, uh, I really enjoy my work as a producer. If I didn't, and if I didn't have that outlet, I could understand why I would try to venture out and maybe try taking a bump and see how that felt and kind of go from there. But luck, I'm, I'm very, I'm very blessed. And luckily I don't have to go down that avenue. So I just, I don't think I'm Going to, well, not, I don't think I know I'm not going to go down that avenue. <laughs> I think people hear a neck injury and they just lump all of them into the same category. Yeah. So and people I, think like, oh, you had the same thing as Edge, right? Yeah. It's a and, neck. And he came back. And, yes. And, and, and Brian, Brian Dennis came back. And Paige, yeah. Yep. Yep. But, and, and I get, I get that. I, 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 well, I get those messages a lot and I get that mindset. I understand where that comes from. Um, I believe Steve Austin has the the second highest, at least in terms of, WWE wrestler uh, in terms of how high their fusion is. His was, a, I think, a C3 and C4. Okay. Most, the normal one is like C5 and 6 or 6 and 7. Mine's C1 and C2. The very top two vertebrae in your body, mine wow. are fused. That's the difference. That's why uh, even when it happened, well, when I posted the the picture of the scar, the staples in the back. Yeah. Uh, well, one of the benefits of joining the broken neck club is, uh, as I refer to it, Steve, o Steve Austin becomes a friend of yours and he, he reaches out to you and you text and phone call all the time. But I posted that picture and within like 20 minutes, Austin was either calling me or texting me and he's like, kid, why'd they go through the, the back? Why not through the front? And I explained, well, Steve, it's the equivalent of where they went is the equivalent of my mouth. That's where my fusion is, is adjacent to my mouth. I don't think people realize that. Yeah, it's that high up. Wow. Natty. Or you'll see a lot of people that have had it, they kind of have that scar. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Mine's... Natty was saying it's like the one right under your brain. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's wild. But the work you're doing behind the scenes, uh, it's just incredible. And it's, I mean, it's grown so much since the last time I talked to you too. Yeah. And it's, it's, um, it's always a challenge and the challenge is always to top whatever we did last time. And that's kind of, that's the, that's the cool thing about, about what we do and about, about WWE and about wrestling being 52 weeks a year. Is, say you don't like your match on uh, Monday, you well, guess what? Next Monday, you'll have another chance. And the following, the following, the following, the following. So that's kind of the, I always will say to uh, talent, like, that'll come back a little bit frustrated. I'm like, are, are you hurt? 
And they're like, no. I said, okay, well, then we can do this again next week, and it'll oh. be better. And that's the progress. So what, know? what are some of the matches that lately you've been working on that you know, people can go watch and go, ah, I see. Um, I was really proud of uh, Charlotte, Bianca, and Asuka at SummerSlam, triple threat. Um, I was really proud of the, the Women's Royal Rumble this year. I loved it. I thought um, thought all the drama and the suspense on the end with Liv, Rhea, and Asuka was exactly what we were looking for. And uh, the truth is, I had I learned some. I had a whole different finish planned um, using Naya, who I got okayed to come in as uh, as a surprise entrant. Uh, she wasn't re-signed yet at that point, and um, I had a whole different finish involving her, and um, it. It got changed maybe two days before. And I remember thinking like, oh, I'm not going to come up with anything better. Ugh, you know, felt a little frustrated. Not not mad at anybody. I, it's That's the game. Sometimes sometimes your idea goes through and sometimes there's little tweaks. And mm. so what's funny is we ended. I learned a very, very valuable lesson. We ended up coming with a way better finish than the one I had mapped out in my mind. It was way, way better. So I learned a lesson that not, not <laughs> fall in love with these, not get married to these ideas because... Things change and it's all moving parts and, and we'll figure it out. The town's good enough that we will absolutely figure this out. This episode is brought to you by our good friends at bluechew.com. And when you use the code CVV, you'll get your first month free. Ah, that wasn't even supposed to rhyme, but that worked great. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra, but in chewable tablets, and best of all, a fraction of the cost. And the process is so simple. Just sign up at bluechew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you are good to go. You receive your prescription in just a few days. Blue Chew wants to help you step things up in the bedroom. They want to help you chew it and do it. Oh yeah. And I mean, this is such a good deal too, right? If you've ever thought about giving it a try, go to bluechew.com, use the code CVV. Your first month is free. You just have to pay $5 for shipping. Yeah, it's such a good deal. I, I can't even believe it. I'm gonna say it again one more time for you. Your first month is free when you sign up at bluechew.com and you use the code CVV. You just have to pay $5 for shipping. I also can't believe I said chew it and do it, but hey, it works, right? Walk us through a day, like, so you, you get to the arena. Do you already know your matches at that point? Usually, yeah. Okay. Not always, but usually. And then do you get with the talent at that point? Yeah, well, we'll first we'll, uh, I'll have the production meeting in the day. That's the first thing I do. Then get out of the production meeting. Then, yeah, then get with the talent. Then start kind of strategizing and figuring out, you know, a, a lot of things factor into these matches. How much time we have. Um, is it two segments? Is it three segments? Is it one? Um, where are we on the show? Is there another, since I work with the women almost exclusively, is there another women's match on the show? Well, okay, what are they doing that then we're going to do very different? So the, if there's two on that show or three, keep them all very different from each other. Um, there's a lot of moving parts and a lot of, a lot of different aspects that go into it. it I mean, you know, if it sounds so crazy, but a four minute match and a seven minute match are very different. In terms of putting it together, it's very different. In what way? Just in terms of like, there's just a lot more. I, I've had this conversation a bunch with Bailey, but like, so a four minute match or a seven or eight minute match, again, let's just say even, let's say 10. In a 10 minute match, you know, if you mess up a couple things in the beginning or maybe your ideas when you're putting it together, maybe they weren't exactly, you weren't hitting in the beginning. You have a few more minutes to like, get out of that and be, you know, and the whole match by the end could be totally different in a four minute, three, four minute match. Every city, you know, you might plan, let's just say six things. Let's say five things. Each thing is worth 20% of that match. Sure. So each thing is now has so much more importance in the shorter match. A shorter match is it's crazy. They're, they're a lot trickier to put together than the longer ones. A 20 minute match is, Obviously, you know, you have to fill that 20 minutes. And if the story's right, it, that actually shouldn't be that hard, honestly. But a, uh, a, a five-minute match is, is a little trickier to put together than a 20-minute match, if you can believe that. The car now, again, cardio and all that is a whole different ball game. But a five-minute match is tricky because, you know, like, whoever's losing, they want to make sure that they look good before mm -hmm. the losing. You got only, you know, 
three or four minutes to do that. You know, it, 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 the time crunch is very different. When the match is actually on, where are you watching it in Gorilla? I'm in Gorilla. I have the headset on. Um, I always joke that you haven't really worked in WWE to put that headset on at least one time. It's crazy. You put that headset on and you're talking to a lot of people at one time. Every camera guy can hear me when I, when I press the ring channel, whatever. Yeah. Every, every cameraman can hear me. Um, the truck can hear me. Um, the referee can the hear referee, you? The referee, I can talk to the ref. Yeah. Um, Hunter, Triple H, Bruce, Pritchard. I mean, whoever's got the headset on, Billy Kidman, who's time in the show. Uh, you, put, you put that headset on, you're talking to at least like 15 people. But, but, but like maybe five or six are talking back to you. Mm. And you're trying to watch the match. And you're trying to uh, communicate to the truck of like what's, you know, you don't want to miss shots so what's happening next. And a lot of times the talent will come to the back and they'll ask me what I thought of the match. And I, I can give them a general um, view of the match. But I always tell them I have to. I have to go and watch it after by myself because there's too much stuff going on. I'm, I'm checking the time. I'm, I'm talking to the truck. I'm talking to the ref. Hey, make sure. Hey, tell him plan B, plan B, plan B. I mean, that happened a few weeks ago. Uh, I matched a few weeks ago. I was very proud of um, Becky and Zoe Falls Count Anywhere match. And that was, we, there was a lot of, lot of audibles going on on the fly that if you, if you just, if I were to just watching it and I didn't know, you wouldn't catch them. But sure. I, when, I, when I'm at home watching it back, I, I, Caught that one. I caught that one. Caught that. Okay. Plan B in terms of what's going on in the match, or like an actual Pla like different finish. Uh, not a different finish, but just uh, either making something longer or making it shorter, depending on time. Especially yeah. when you have when you have that last segment on SmackDown or Raw. There's no. There's not an overrun anymore. Mm. That thing's. Uh, it's tense. <laughs> it's tense. Like on headset, there. You know, they start. They'll be, they'll hit you with the. Okay, we have. Five minutes to drop dead. <laughs> I remember the first time I heard drop dead. Like, that's pretty intense, man. We're going to drop dead. Well, drop that means dead. that no matter what's going on, the show ends. Yes. Yeah. And so plan B, pl plan A is always, hey, let's get this finish on TV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was, that's always plan A. I was talking to uh, one of your fellow producers, I was talking to Shane Helms, and he was saying what was so interesting was, he gets so much, like now that he's a producer, he gets so much of like, oh, why stuff is a certain way or like he wished he had known when he was a wrestler how things actually worked behind the scenes. That gave me goosebumps because it's so true. It, you know, it's one of those things. It's like you wish you wish you knew now. You wish you knew then what you know now and you could apply it. You know, like if I yeah. could if I could take what I know now and apply it to even say like from my NXT run on how different that would be just in what I know, you know? And that's just, I guess, I guess that's life. Uh, wrestling is funny like that. I, I always say that it's like you're, when you start out your physical, you know, you're, when you start out, you're young and you're invincible and your physical is like a 10 out of 10. But what you know about actually what you really know, not in terms of like, you know, knowing that Hulk Hogan beat Iron Sheik to win the title, not, but like in terms of what you actually know when you're in there is maybe a two out of 10. And as time goes, as time goes on, mm. the two start to balance. Yeah. And then somewhere the mind starts to overtake the physical. And, you know, you start to see glimpses of it. Like to me, like Bret Hart in, in 96, 97, that Hart Foundation run, 1997, uh, like his, his promos were like, perfect his work everything had connected at that point and it was he's 40 years old at that run 39 40 mm -hmm. you know he's been doing it his whole life the encyclopedic knowledge that you have about pro wrestling <laughs> is like rain man level I, it's 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 so weird i like i try to distract myself with so many other things so that way wrestling it's this constant battle and i love wrestling but i try not to let it because for many for a couple decades it like consumed everything in me now i i try to play a lot of 2k and i i'm a big basketball fan so i'm excited for the nba season to start again soon and i i'm a big ufc fan i engulf myself in all these other things but really it's like wrestling's like you can try if you want to but we know that you remember everything we've done like it's 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 true i do i have a i have a phenomenal memory but when it comes to wrestling it's like extra for some 
reason. Like I, you I don't know why. You can like tell us finishes of matches that happened 27 years ago. Like yeah, yeah, hell yeah. Especially if like <laughs> yeah, if, if, it, if, it, if it meant something to me, absolutely I will tell you. <laughs> hell yeah. <laughs> I was talking to Nick Aldis. You know, he's a huge Bret Hart fan. Yeah. He says that his favorite match was... We're going to go down a real rabbit hole on this. <laughs> it was Bret Hart, Mr. Perfect, but King of the Ring. And he was talking about like the, just the nuances during this. Do you know what I'm talking about? Uh, I know the match, yeah, yeah absolutely. He was talking about the nuances of like, then Bret does this, and then Bret did this thing, and then Mr. Perfect did this. And I'm like, oh, man. That's just the way you guys think. You know what's really funny, man? If, again, goosebumps. So here's the thing. You just brought up King of the Ring 93. You just brought up Bret and Mr. Perfect and my memory. I will tell you, I can, uh, this is a funny story and I don't mean, I'm going to try to make it not long winded. Um, how I kind of, we're not even kind of, how I won Brett over, we were training at his house in 96. We, we wrestled a, a WWE live event match at the Saddle Dome in 1996. I was 16. Harry was 11. Teddy was 16. What? Yeah, we did it. 11? We, yeah, Harry was 11. In the finish, he did a headbutt off the... Teddy superplexed me, and Harry did a headbutt off the top rope at 11 years old. Like it just In front is, of, like, a crowd? Yeah, yeah, in front of... Uh, there might have been... Might have been like five or six thousand people there that day. Oh. <laughs> at the what? Saddle Dome, it was, it was uh, Shawn Michaels and Vader's the main event. This is insane. <laughs> Eleven years old and sixteen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, sorry, I've interrupted no, no, your story. No, no. So, uh, so Brett came to that show. He, had, he uh, you know, I don't know the inner workings. Maybe he had signed back, but this is like. The, the promo hadn't happened yet where he comes on TV and says like that he's signing with WWE and he's going to wrestle Steve Austin at Survivor Series. It's around that timeline, but it's not quite there yet. So we start training at Brett's house. Brett came that day, and uh, then he invited us to start coming and training at, at his house. So Teddy and I were training at his house, and one day Brett was in the ring, and he was in there with us, and he was telling us a story about um, King Ring 93 and about how like when he found out he wasn't going to win any of the matches with the sharpshooter. And he said, you know, so I had them. So he's like, I wanted to come up with a reason logically, the psychology as to why am I not winning with the sharpshooter these three matches? And um, he's like, do you guys know what, what it was? And right away, Ted jumped in and Ted said, oh, yeah, they worked your knee. And Brett said, no. And then I thought for a second. I, and I can remember, like, I remember Razor stomping on Brett's hands. And then I remember Brett going for the sharpshooter with Mr. Perfect. And he grabs his fingers. And I, I said, your fingers. And Brett, like, he almost, like, he looked for a second, and he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, almost, how did this kid know? And then I think that's what started the wheels of, like, Brett was like, oh, this, he really does pay attention to wow. details. Wow. And, and last time I saw Brett, um, I was at his house a few months ago, and um, he knows, like, I love the Iron Man match, Brett and Sean. And I remember he, he said, so... Knowing what you know now, would you do it the way we did it, where we just kind of go two minutes extra, or would you go an extra like fifteen or twenty? Oh, that's a good question. And and I I I said I said that's a good question, man, because both work. And then Brett goes, no, no, I'm asking you. And I was like, oh, you, this isn't a retort. This is like TJ's got to answer this question now. I said, man, I've seen the two minute version. Give me the give me the fifteen or twenty. Let's see. Let's I don't know. Let's see what it is. So you're putting your producer hat on here. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, because before it would have been the fan hat. Of course. Wow. And, and I was there live. O Owen flew me to that WrestleMania 12, so that's another reason. Uh, like, it extra has like a special sentiment sentimental value to me. My friends with UFC 295 this weekend and WWE Survivor Series just around the corner. It's time to put your money where your mouth is at my bookie. Yeah, of course you knew you could bet on UFC, but you heard me right. You can bet on WWE PLEs at mybookie.ag. And check this out. If you haven't signed up already, use my code CVV and you'll get a cash bonus on top of your first deposit. And look, I see the comments. Oh man, pro wrestling is so predictable these days. Well, if it's so predictable, why not make a little bit of money off it? It, it should be pretty easy, right? It almost feels too easy, doesn't it? Right? Like if Roman Reigns is in a match, and I'm, I know he's not in a match at Survivor Series, but I'm just saying, for example, when Roman Reigns is in a match these days, we kinda know what's gonna happen, it feels like. So place a bet at my bookie, use that code CVV. Oh man.
I love that you're passing this all down, not just through the producing, but also with what you guys have in your own dungeon. And the, I mean, the, the videos get posted, the names of the people that have been through there. Uh, we, we had Natty on. She was listing off a bunch of people. Yeah. And she's like, oh, I forgot all these other people. Yeah, that she want, made sure that I <laughs> men mentioned them, which I will. I will. <laughs> no, the truth is we have a great crew of people there. So I get why you start running on some names and you might forget some because you're just trying to make sure you're trying not to leave anybody out. But in doing so, you end up leaving people out because you're just trying to name. Thinking of, you're thinking of the... You're trying to think more of the people that you're almost forgetting rather than almost the obvious people that come to your mind. So it's, uh, it's like a workshop for, like, for established wrestlers that are just looking to you know, get that just that 1% better. Yeah, and you, what's cool is what my ultimate idea of it would be is basically what it is now. But yeah, I kind of needed everybody to get there. But exactly, where it is just a workshop where we kind of just throw around different philosophies and different psychologies and and then almost like play them out and see if it if we feel it works or doesn't work and kind of just trying out different things but you know it kind of needed everybody to get to a certain level before we could get there like I trained a couple guys from scratch that I've improved immensely it's just it's a good it's a sorry it's not even good it's a great it's just a great environment like I've had a lot of guys come and say to the two guys I trained from scratch, they've told them, I don't know if you guys realize, it's not like a normal wrestling school. Like there's no, there's not a lot of like BS or backstabbing or, you know, that toxicity going on of, yeah, just, and that's, that's not to say that that only happens in wrestling. It just is, sometimes it's human nature and it, you know, gossip and that kind of thing happens. But at my ring, I feel like we don't have much of that. There's no point. It's, it's not about, you know, getting booked on this local show. Or yeah. We have a bunch of guys like Dawkins, who's on SmackDown. Apollo, who's, I believe, on Raw at the moment. Um, uh, B-Fab, again, who's on SmackDown. You know, you have Moose from Impact Wrestling. Like, it's all these people from all these different places. And then it's almost like we all kind of come together and then everybody kind of disperses and like, yeah. all right, go spread the information and go. This is it's actually the opposite of mo most normal wrestling schools because... A normal wrestling school, everybody's at that like two out of ten. You know, they're learning everything yeah. for the first time. Here you've got people that have five, ten, twenty years experience that are just getting the rust off or they're just trying to get just a little bit better. And of course there's no, you know, uh, jealousy because everybody ha already has a job. Yeah. I mean, yeah, m most of the people, that is true. But it, like it's funny. Um, I don't think it's a big deal to share this but a few months ago or maybe six months ago Les Spears was texting me and he was like hey are, are you running practice today I said yep he said is it cool to stop by and I was like yeah and I was thinking like weird I mean he has his own ring yeah and it's much closer to his house <laughs> I assume <laughs> so anyway he came to he came to training and of course he was great we've always gotten along great um and after he kind of he gave a speech kind of to everybody you know and he was like man this is a this is a great facility. He said, guys, I'm, I'm usually working with guys that are brand new. He's like, I wanted to like get out and, and just get a different change of scenery. And I, right, I was like, oh, it clicked. Like he's training people, you know, from scratch to the three month mark. And then they, off they go. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and then rinse and repeat. And, not, and I mean, rinse and repeat as, as in like. Just new students coming yeah, in. Yeah, new students coming in. Yeah. So he's always kind of in that newish. He's yes. always working with newish people. And, and, you can, and you definitely sharpen your skills, but it's a different set of skills than if you work with people that are polished and have more experience. Not more experience than Spears, but just more experience than the people you're normally in there with. So, sure. so you know, I, I was like, oh, it, it, all this is about balance. He's, get, he's just getting a little bit of balance. He wanted to get in there with some people that had a little more experience. I, I got it. Because for most wrestlers that are working every week, the only time they're really getting in the ring is during their match. Yep. And maybe earlier in the day. Sure, sure. If the ring's free. Yep. If but, the ring's free. Right. <laughs> what, what you've got here is like, you know, kind of an ability for anybody to drop by. Yeah. And especially like, um, especially if, if you have... A, like obviously if we know you but if you have any kind of if you're any if you're in WWE at all you obviously are welcome to come down and then anyone else that's reached out like for the most part everyone's uh, you know can't just have everyone anyone or everyone but we've had a lot of people come at least one time and just it's not for everybody so it, it, sometimes it is a little I mean it's hot in there there's uh <laughs> there's a couple of industrial fans but otherwise it's 
It's a sauna. It's a sauna. <laughs> Dawkins comes there and brings about four or five shirts and so sweats through all of them on purpose. He treats it as a cardio workout, and, and, it, and it's working. When we came in here, you were playing something. What were you playing? What video game? Uh, NBA 2K24. Is that your game? Yeah, yeah. Right now, I'm in the, I'm in the grinding part of it. You got to grind and get the VC and... <laughs> Unlock the badges. It's kind of the boring part of the game right now. <laughs> you, you must have just got this game. Yeah, uh, I got it a couple weeks ago. Okay. It just came out. So, so you're like, you know, that, that's the game you're dialed into. Yeah. What was before this game came out? What, what were you playing? Uh, tw 2K23. <laughs> <laughs> I bet I can guess what the next game yeah, will be. But I, I play it like at night. I play a lot of games with my friends. Like I'll play like Among Us just because it's like e you just met. Oh, it's yeah. easy. And like. Uh, FIFA, Last of Us. I play a lot of games, but I get dialed in in one. Right, it's right now, my friends, everybody's playing 2K24, so that's what I'm... NBA 2K24 is what I'm like locked in on at the moment. I stumbled across that throwback photo from WrestleMania 27 when I met you for the very first time. Oh, wow. You blew my mind. I thought we met in Orlando, but we met at WrestleMania we, 27 we, in Atlanta. We really met and like knew who each other yeah. were five years ago, but... WrestleMania 27 in Atlanta, we found out, I, mean, I wasn't really doing a ton of interviews at that time. We found out where the Talent Hotel was. And we're like, well, let's just go get a drink at that bar. Yeah. And all of you guys were in the lobby. So I got a photo with you. I got a photo with Natty, a bunch of people. I wonder, what, do you remember what night that was? Was that like the first night? Was I that like it was like the Friday okay, night? Because okay. it, it's really funny. I think I, I met him as a kid, but I met X, like as a, you know, as a WWE Superstar. I met X Pac there. I got a photo with X Pac that night. That is so funny. And then Stone Cold came down to the bar. Okay, yep. Just for like one beer. Yep. And he got mobbed. By I him. remember. And he had like his own security that was like, guys, like, yep. he just wants to drink a yep. beer. Like, give him some space. But uh, the, the thing about that photo with you is your hair is just, that's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> the front piece. And I, at that point, I was, I remember WrestleMania 27. At that point, I'm using like Natty had a. One of those, I guess it's a flat iron. Believe it or not, I don't really know. But I would use that to make my hair straight up. But I, I remember on a European tour right after WrestleMania, I went to do it and uh, like a like one whole side, like the half broke off. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to cut the other side so it matched. It was crazy. Your, it, your hair, chunk of hair broke off? Yeah, that little front piece from the, the, from the flat iron every day. What would you call that haircut? A lot of people would call called it the Charlie Brown. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the Tyson. I, I mean, know, it really man. is it's, the Tyson kid. Here's the truth: a lot of people have asked me about it. My barber always will joke because, like, uh, in the barber shop a few weeks ago, they they were pulling up old pictures of it, and my my barber's like, he kind of shakes his head because he's he was not my barber at that time. So, like, he, whenever he gets tagged in it, he's like, it's not me. I wasn't the one doing that. I said, no, I was doing it myself. But here's the thing. I, I needed something. I needed something to identify me from everybody else. Um, my promos got better, but at that time, I knew my promos weren't going to be it. I was smaller than most of the guys, uh, height-wise and stature. So I just I needed a little something to stick out. And I remember, like, maybe two weeks in, being on the main roster, we were in um, Cincinnati, and... Uh, I, met, I ran into this uh, woman and her son, and her, she's like, hey, he's a huge fan. And, she, and then I look, he has the exact same haircut. Oh. She's like, do you recognize the haircut? And I was like, I sure do. <laughs> and that happened before when I was wrestling in England, too. So I always, I, I felt like I needed something to like, so I had that for like the first, I had it for a long time from like 2005, probably to 2011. That's a long time. Yeah. So what makes you decide like, all right, it's back to a normal haircut. Now. I was like, okay, uh, I was not really doing much. I was on like NXT when it was on the main roster, but not on TV. It was just on the website and on wrestling on superstars and NXT basically. And I was like, I need something different. I was like, I'm sick of like this little haircuts run its course. Going to the movie theater looking like this has run its course. <laughs> just wear a lot of hats. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, all right, let me, I, I remember asking Johnny, I said, do you mind if I shave my, I didn't want to, um, I didn't want to like be locked into one. I said, do you mind if I shave my hair or grow it out? I kind of left it open. Yeah. And then he was like, yeah, no problem. And then, everyone um, does a Johnny ace. I love it. <laughs> yeah. And I, yeah, you have to, you have to, you have to. It's, I think it's awesome. It, I wish I had a voice that was like that. That was so identifable. That's everyone true. knows who it is. It's that's awesome. true. Yeah. 
no, no one does Macho Man's voice as an insult. You know what I mean? Absolutely, you're absolutely right. And so, uh, <laughs> uh, I, then I started shaving it, and I remember a few weeks in, Johnny's like, "I thought you said you were gonna grow it out," and I was like, "Oh, I think he liked that part better." Okay, so I grew it out a, a and, little bit, and now you've got normal hair. Yeah, now I have normal hair. <laughs> <laughs> and and you know what's funny? I, I wonder. I, I'm sure they wouldn't bother me too much, but how much would they? How much would like they really enjoy? that look as a producer you're gonna bring it back no, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> i know you've got to wear a, a suit when you go in there yeah. so i don't know if the suit and the hair yeah, yeah maybe it's that's it that's a balance i'm Ooh, talking that's about the juxtaposition yeah there. yeah <laughs> like you're, graves with you, the tattoos that's true suits you know it's yeah you're looking jacked by the way I'm trying to i just uh i natty's funny she always gets mad at me i'm always buying gimmicks but right now i recently bought uh you know, training the garage in Florida is a sauna, but I actually bought like a little like one man sauna. I saw it. It's awesome. Why don't you buy a wooden sauna? I, I, uh, Natty gets mad and she's tells me that there's nowhere to put it. So I, I got that one off of Amazon for like $200 thinking if it's, if it's, if it's garbage, at least it, you know, I'm not bankrupt. What even it. heats it for $200? Um, you plug it in and there's a little steamer in there. Oh, okay. And then, um, it gets, it's like 110 degrees in there. Okay. It, it, I mean, so that's, that's oh, you mean in, inside the sauna? Inside. It's gotta be warmer than that. Cause a normal, like a sauna, if you went to the gym, is like 170, 180. So maybe, but maybe just my little, I have like a little thermometer in there. I was trying to see how hot it is. It's, it's a bit of a sauna and a steam room cause the steam's coming out. It's a little bit of both. Okay. But I, I. I noticed a difference in my body in the last two weeks that I've had it. Oh, that's great. I, like, I love the sauna. I love it. And I missed it. It's one thing I miss about public gyms. I haven't been to a public gym since the pandemic. Outside, yeah, I work out in hotel gyms now on the road. I don't picture myself ever in a public gym ever again. You've I, got such a great setup here. I, I love this gym. I love this yeah. gym. And the mural. And like, that guy, he did a phenomenal job. Phenomenal so job. So it's, there's murals of Brett. Owen, yep. you, and Anvil, right? Am uh, I missing anyone? Brad Owen, Davey. Oh, Davey. Yep. And, yeah. and, the, and the, the me, that was, I didn't ask for that. That was Natty's edition. I didn't. Natty needs to be in there. Yeah, I didn't put myself on the wall. That wasn't <laughs> my thing. That was Natty. <laughs> I wasn't doing that. I would have I would have put Pillman on. He's the yeah. he's, he's the fifth member. Yeah, that's true. I don't know if, uh, I don't know if Natty's told you this, but like, obviously she's going to go in the Hall of Fame one day, right? Yeah. And she said that uh, she'd love you to induct her one day. I never even thought about that. Well, she's like, you know, I, I think that that would be one of them. Maybe it's Brett. Maybe it's Stephanie. But uh, I mean, think so about I'm it. on the list. I, you're, you're number one. And oh, then, and wow. then it was like, oh, got it, got it. Way after. Because think about it. And especially the way she explained it. You've been there the whole time. You've been part of her wrestling journey, her wrestling story since. Before day one, actually. Yeah, yeah. I trained her from the beginning, from the very, very beginning. Yeah, uh, that's where, like, I'm very proud, obviously, of Natty's career. Um, <clears throat> having the most matches of any woman in WWE history, and she just keeps adding on to that. You know, that's like um, <clears throat> that's a Cal Ripken thing. You can't, you can't manufacture that, yeah. you know. You have to show up. You have to show day. up. And you have to, you know, by the whatever the star whatever but to not be injured in in this in, in any sport it, you know that's why cal ripkin's record it's it's hard to play a sport you know all in baseball 162 games yeah. you know basketball 82 games hockey 80 it's hard to do that mm -hmm. but in in wrestling in WWE, it's 52 weeks a year yeah no there's, off season. there's no off season i you know we would do wrestlemania which would be our super bowl the next day is raw so like we do the Super Bowl and then very next day is a regular season game. And then generally the week after that, then we'd go to Europe. So it's like then we're in Europe for two weeks as a talent. Like you just you do the Super Bowl. Imagine doing the Super Bowl. And then like the very next week is a game again. And it's off you go. And I, I get it. It's it's only in our world. And there's a reason for it. It's just it's it's interesting when you look at it comp compared to anything else. It just is a different animal altogether. So. These accolades that Natty has is it's going to be, uh, it's I, I say nearly impossible to beat, but I I use the Dr. Tom quote of what's impossible, what's 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 possible has been done, what's impossible will be done. So mm. 
again, never say never, but I don't know. I don't, I don't know how anyone's going to get close to touching these numbers that yeah. he has. <laughs> what would you say has been the biggest change you've seen since you stopped wrestling to the, the product that we have now? That's a great question. Um, There's definitely there's definitely been a lot of change. Um, even if you start with with the producers, there there is a change in producers over the last four years. Uh, Royal Rumble 2019, the, the the Raw after they brought in a lot of producers. Um, Kurt Angle, Abyss. That's when Helms started as a producer. Um, Davari, Sanjay. Um, I, I'm, I'm Lance Storm. I'm missing a few, but they're, I mean, they brought in like eight or something, like eight brand new producers and Jason Jordan started around that time, a little before that. So I think, um, the producer game got younger. There's a younger mindset in there. Again, does, that doesn't mean it's, it's going to be right. Doesn't, it doesn't mean it's going to be wrong. It just means it's going to be a little different. Um, and I think a lot of changes in terms of, uh, obviously, especially at a time when Vince stepped down and, and Triple H took over, it was a, it became, you could see the differences on the show week to week. Cause I think again, same kind of mindset was just, it's just a, a younger mindset. And mm. so it's just, again, it's not, I'm not saying it's all going to be right. And it's definitely not all going to be wrong. It's just going to be different and mm. you just got to, ride it out and kind of see where it goes. But certain things like the storytelling, like like this Roman Reigns bloodline stuff has been going on for three years. And I, I, for me personally, I, some others may think whatever, but for me personally, I'm as into it as I've ever been. Yeah. So, yeah, and you see like the Judgment Day. Yeah. Um, Gunther just beat Hunky. So I think uh, there seems to be a lot more long-term stuff happening. Definitely. It, like it... And the thing with the bloodline storyline is just when you think like, ah, I'm not that interested anymore. Yep. Pulls yep. You right back it's in. It's so true. It's so true. Yeah, three years in, it's crazy. But you're right. The long-term storytelling hadn't been done. Not, not at this level. Not, and not, not at so many different things. Yeah. Like, and, and like really, long-term storytelling hadn't been done in maybe decades. Like, Shh. like for you're stories right. like that that are lasting this long. Yeah. Like think about even like in this last year, like, how far the judgment they have come. Um, the bloodline continues to be very strong. Bianca broke some record for longest reigning, like raw champion for 400 days or something. Mm -hmm. And then Gunther, like I said, just beat honky tonk man. So to your point is like, those are four like big key points of like that involves long term thinking and storytelling to get there. You can't, yeah, yeah. you can't just, you know, if, uh, you can't just wake up tomorrow and say, hey, you know what? Well, tomorrow we'll say that this is a 400-day reign. And you're mm. like, well, they only won it last week. You're like, yeah, but storytelling. No, let's say 400 now. <laughs> yeah. Time lapse. Yeah. Like, that's, not, that's not how this works. This yeah. is in real time. Yeah. All, of our, all of our stuff is in real time. Have you been uh, keeping tabs on what your buddy uh, Claudio has been doing? Uh, yep, a little bit here and there. Uh, he and I, we just spoke on the phone for about an hour and a half last week. He had a drive. He, did, he was driving from like, uh, he was driving in Pennsylvania. So he's driving to Philly for a flight or something. So we, yeah, we spoke for a while. I feel like when you guys were doing stuff together, like both, it was always like, these guys are the workhorses and these guys are like underappreciated. And I feel like now he's starting to be appreciated. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm proud of him. He, he, he never stops this guy. He always wants to get better. Here's the crazy thing. He's already so good. He's so good yet he is he's on this permanent quest to keep getting better he's not he's not he's so funny like after a match he won't be like yeah that was amazing he, he if it's great he will accept it but he'll be like ah, i could do this better and do that better he's just he's just he's a perfectionist in mm -hmm. a good way not in a not in a way that's going to make him you know toxic or or negative it's not that he just is very funny because just like you said, like he's he has been underappreciated for a very long time, and and it feels like now he's not. In, now he is. Now he's being appreciated in the way yeah. he should be. Yeah. Uh, speaking of being appreciated, I appreciate you. Hell it's, yeah, <laughs> my it's, pleasure. It's good to be able to catch up with you. Yeah, this is your third time on the show. Yeah. I, I, hey, I I don't want to be a stranger. I like it. Oh, no, I like it too. Uh, I don't think I was doing this before. Uh, 
I end with the same question every single time about gratitude. What are three things in your life you're grateful for right now? Wow. That is a great question. I'm very grateful. It's funny because I'll, it can be frustrating, but I am insanely grateful for wrestling, for the wrestling business. Um, it's given me everything in my life. Everything, every single thing I have, everything mm. I've accomplished, everything I've been able to help out other family members and stuff. It's all through wrestling, every single thing, no matter how frustrated I get with wrestling or how much I might curse it on a random Monday. <laughs> <laughs> the truth is I love wrestling. I love wrestling like nothing else and I'm very grateful for it. Um I mean the obvious is being grateful for my health and you know I it's something that I do my best and I'm not perfect by any means, but I do my best not to take it for granted like the fact that I'm able to move my neck even as much as I can and that I'm not in pain. Like I'm very grateful that Honestly, I, w I wake up every day and not, there are bad days once in a while where my neck will be stiff and my traps will be tight or whatever when I get up. But for the most part, I wake up pain free and I wrestled almost exactly 20 years. I started in July 1995 and my last match is June 2015. It's very close to exactly 20 years at a, at a very high paced, high impact style f for pretty much the duration of that career from the beginning to the end. Um, so I'm grateful that I, I'm pretty much pain free, and I honestly, especially after the injury. Like, and by the way, was the worst case scenario it, with your injury uh, that you couldn't move your limbs, or was it that you would die? Uh, worst case was death. <sighs> worst case was death, dude. I, I was getting uh, the 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 nurse was the one who finally like said that to me. I was getting a little bit antsy because there were. And this is a totally different subject, but they were waiting on an airlift. They were working on an airlift, and um, we were in Texas, and they were bringing me back to Tampa. And they would inject me with, like, blood thinners and do all this stuff and come check my vitals. And I wasn't on any painkillers or anything while I was there. I just was, like, uncomfortable. Like, I was in a collar, and I was just in a pain, but not, not enough that I needed a painkiller or anything. I'm just sitting there. And after the second day of... of maybe we're going to get out of here, but then we don't. I was, I was starting to get a little agitated and I said, man, I just want to go home. And then the nurse came in. She said, sir, I don't think you understand like your C2, which is uh, the, the ligament that holds the C2 in place is what ruptured all my injury. The C2 controls your breathing. She said, sir, the, <laughs> I only laugh because of how crazy it is, but she was like, when you landed, you should have, you should have suffocated to death on impact. Wow. And I was like, oh. And then she said, she said, 99% 99, uh, 99 of people that survive this are quadriplegic. She said, somehow you didn't suffocate to death. And somehow you're not a quadriplegic. Please understand we're, we're trying to help you. I wasn't being belligerent. I just was starting to get a little, and then that brought everything right mm. back to reality. And I was like, you know what? I Yo, did you guys switch this bed while we were talking? Because this bed just got so comfortable. And this TV <laughs> I was complaining about is perfect. It's perfect. It, yeah, so I'm yeah. very I'm very grateful for my health. Yeah. And um, my third one, I mean, I'm grateful grateful for my, for my family, for the life that I have for Natty. You know, I'm very grateful that I have Natty in my life. Because without Natty, a lot, none of this happens. Yeah. I, wouldn't, um, I wouldn't have achieved any of this. I would have... <laughs> I, I can be I can be fiery, but only because she allows me to. Otherwise, I'll I'll turn into a little wallflower. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, I'm very grateful for Natty. So good to see you, brother. Chris is always great seeing you. Yeah, man. appreciate you. Hell yeah, I always see your clips all the time. I I'll be scrolling Instagram and I'll always stop and watch your clips all the time. It, hey, it's, yeah, and I'm not you. just saying that because you're sitting here. I I swear I'll stop and watch your clips all the time. I see you with masters. I see you with. With with everybody, man, RVD. I I see. I just yeah. It's it's. I always. It's always a collection of who's who. I I actually did. I was scrolling through and I saw you you talking with, talking with Nick about Mr. Perfect and Bret Hart. So that's so funny. Oh, wow. I really I really saw that scrolling the other day. Wow. And well, and now we just made a bunch of clips right here. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. Chris, thank you very much. I appreciate you. Yeah, thank you.